So far this semester, we've talked about mathematical definitions that we're going to need, like sets, functions, uh, one-to-one, onto, injective, surjective, those sorts of things. We're going to be using those a lot throughout the semester. We also talked about kind of the, the broad, vague idea about what a model of computing looks like, where we said a computer is essentially going to implement some sort of function that's going to map input strings to output strings. And we talked last week about considering Python as being some model of computing, and then using that, we were actually able to make some first proofs about kind of computability, what we can compute and what we can compute. Where what we did is we said that every Python program can be represented as a string that has finite length. And since every Python program can be represented as a string with finite length, there is going to be a countably infinite number of Python programs possible. And then we went and said that the number of functions that map strings to strings is actually uncountable. So since there's more functions that we might want to implement than there were actually Python programs that we could use to implement functions, we already know that some functions are not going to be implementable using Python programs. So what we're going to be talking about this week is we're going to be talking a little bit more precisely about various computing models. So we're going to have formal definitions for uh, certain kinds of computing models that we're going to see. And we're going to use those definitions to prove things that we are able to compute, things that we're not able to compute, and be able to talk about the costs of computing certain functions. So the model of computing that we're going to be starting with this week is this Boolean circuit model that we introduced in the last video of last week, and it's equivalent to that straight line programming model that you had some homework on last week. Now, you can consider this programming model to be equivalent to or to represent what a computer can do if it has little to no memory available to it. So maybe you just have the CPU part of your computer without without the RAM or the hard drive. So before we can get started discussing this model of computation more formally, we're going to introduce a new idea called graph. So that's going to be necessary in us actually defining what a circuit is and how to evaluate a circuit. Uh, and then after that, we're going to be able to start now actually demonstrating. Here's the sorts of things we can compute. Here's the things we can't compute. Hope you have fun. <laughs> 